inside there. In the last video, we covered different types of bows and the basic techniques to render them. But how about actually utilizing them to render clothing for a character? First, we can simplify the rendering process by breaking it down into four essential steps. Sketching, basic color, rendering, and final detailing. When you're sketching, having access to references like photos and fabric swatches can really bring your character to life on the page. Pay attention to the type of fabric your character's clothing is made of, because it affects how the folds and details will look in your sketch. For example, the folds of a hoodie will be softer and more spaced out compared to the sharper, closer together folds of a shirt. Remember, your sketch doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a rough guide to help you visualize your artwork. And don't worry, you can always make changes as you go along. Now that we have our sketch done, it's time to bring in some color. This is where I diverge into two different methods. For easier understanding, we will cover each technique at a time. Let's get started with method number one, grayscale, which I have mentioned in a previous video. First, create a new layer below the sketch layer. Then, begin adding various shades of gray for each clothing piece on separate layers. Trust me, this step will save you a lot of hassle down the road. Next, add another layer and choose a darker gray to add some shadows. To make things easier, set the layer to multiply, so you don't have to manually select a new color each time. I usually work with two to three shades of gray. A couple for the mid-tones and one for the darkest shadow. A neat trick that I learned is to lower the opacity of the fill tool to automatically darken the area as you draw, making the process much easier. As you are drawing, remember that references are just tools to help you, so feel free to exaggerate or understate certain parts as needed. The key is to strike a balance between providing enough information for the viewer to believe while also maintaining artistic freedom. Once you are satisfied with the shadows, use the blur tool to softly blend the edges, creating a more natural look. With the base done, it's time for rendering. Add a new layer and set it to overlay. Then select some colors according to the reference or some that you like. It might take a couple tries to get the shades just right. Next, add a new layer and set it to overlay again or color. I'm setting it to overlay in this case. This is where you can start adding beautiful color variations to the flat shades. I like to bring in some warm orange tones near the skin and add hints of cold blue or teal on the outer edges. I also use the same techniques for her boots. Okay, now it's time for highlights. Create a new layer and set it to glow dodge or dodge if your program doesn't have the first option. Then choose a rich brownish color and carefully apply the highlights. Remember, the color of your brush will influence the type of light it creates. For a warm glow, go for a brownish color from the red, orange, or yellow side of the color wheel. For a colder light, pick shades from the blue, teal, or green sides from the color wheel. Moving on to adding some details. Wait, wait a minute. I guess this counts as final detailing, so let's roll the title. Okay, back to drawing. As I was saying, let's add some details to make the whole piece feel more finished. Since I'm going for more of a color sketch style, I'm sprinkling in some colors here and there to add some variation. I usually pick out colors already on the canvas and use them to liven up areas that feel dull to the eye. In this case, I'm opting for light orange and light teal. I'm also using these colors for outlining and adding details to her jacket and boots. Even just adding a few details can help bring the whole artwork together. 
I also did another full study using the same technique, so I'll just show you the time-lapse. As you notice, in comparison to the jacket, the fabric of a t-shirt and jeans are thinner, so they create folds that feel sharper and are closer to each other. Here are the finished drawings. I also rendered the face and the hair a bit because I just can't leave it at that. Some of my wisdom works that use this technique are the Miku Chan, the Perspective Practice, and this Draw This In Your Style Challenge. This technique uses a rather meticulous approach and does produce a clean finished drawing. But sometimes I just want to go with the flow and figure things out as I go. This brings us to method number 2, the messy way, aka thick coating. The sketching process is the same, but when you start adding the base colors, think of it like adding the first layer of paint on a canvas. You want to choose the actual colors you envision for the final drawing, but be mindful not to go too dark or too light at this stage. It might take a few attempts to nail the perfect shade, it is for me at least. Zoom out often to check the color balance and the overall view of the artwork. Once you are satisfied with the base, create a new layer and set it to multiply. It's time to lay down some shadows. Experiment with lighter or slightly different colors from the base to add depth and dimension. You can even add another multiply layer or choose a darker hue to block in some mid-tones, making the final rendering process easier. This phase is all about capturing the essence of the drawing, so don't worry too much about the finer details just yet. Just like before, create a new layer and set it to overlay or color to start introducing some color variations. I love picking up colors from the background or objects that are near the clothing, since they complement each other and give the image a vibrant and cohesive look. After you are happy with it, it's time to begin the actual rendering. References are key here. Understanding how fabric drapes and folds under tension will make drawing so much smoother. Since we've got the base colors down, pick a few as you go and add some intricate details. For example, here I'm using some dark orange, purple, and blue to draw the folds. Apart from the fabric swatches, Artwork from your favorite artists can also serve as great references during this process. Surrounding yourself with inspiration can be very beneficial when creating something from your imagination. If you feel the color is off or not saturated enough for your liking, just use the hue, saturation, luminosity, or brightness, contrast, or tone curve function to adjust the colors. Oh, that's a mouthful. Enjoy experimenting with them. You may end up with colors that you wouldn't have thought of on your own. Once you are happy with the drawing, move on to adding some final details, such as line art, touch-ups, and cleaning up the edges. I like to use a hinge of more saturated version of the color palette on some folds or edges to make them stand out. One thing I appreciate about thick coating is that it allows brush strokes to show through on the finished drawing, giving it a chaotic yet well-ordered feeling. Some of my works that use these techniques are the Draw Your OC in this dress, which I use in this video, the Clip Studio Paint Illustration Contest one, and another Draw This In Your Style Challenge, which... <laughs> That's my dog. As I was saying, which is still a work in progress, so I'm gonna finish it in the future. Remember, you don't have to limit yourself to one style. For example, in this drawing, I started off in grayscale and then used thick coating during the rendering process to draw the details and folds. Just do what feels right for you. And that's a wrap for the video. I hope this was helpful. For the next video, I'm thinking about doing a hair tutorial or an animal tutorial. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you watched it till the end, please give it a like and subscribe. It does help out a lot. I guess that's it. Bye!